And this next one is, is pretty interesting. Rob, we are, of course, now in the early stages of what is known as the streaming wars. The streaming wars have begun. And they have begun, and they're off and running right now with so many different streaming services. We talked a lot about this yesterday, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But one of the ones that, of course, launched was Peacock. The stupidest, most asinine, <laughs> idiotic name for a streaming service they could possibly, like CBS All Access, was a better name than Peacock. And that name was dumb. But... It's actually a pretty solid little streaming service when you actually look at all the content that's on there. I've been watching it a lot, watching a lot of The Office and watching a lot of Parks and Rec. My wife's been watching, say, By the Bell, you know, both the old and the new. And so it's pretty good there. Of course, last year was their first year out of the gate. And, well, it's now being reported that Peacock lost nearly a billion dollars in their first year. Uh, now, this is, of course, coming us from Variety, saying that they took an, an estimated $914 million of losses. Now, that's counting the fact that they only had about $115 million in revenue. That means they had roughly an operating expense of a billion dollars, maybe $1.1, $1.2 billion, made a hundred something million in revenue, which left them with a loss of 914. Now, in the grand scale, scale of things, losing a billion dollars as a big streaming service is not so bad. Netflix alone, I think it was 2020, 2019, lost like 12, 13 billion dollars in that one year. Now, of course, they had hundreds or or not hundreds, sorry, they had like tens of billions of dollars in revenue, but you know, between their licensing fees and just their operating costs and production costs, they ended up losing a lot of money. It's okay. They know their long game, they're gonna make up for that, and it's not a big deal. Disney Plus lost a lot of money. On their first year. They knew that. They knew that going into this that they were going to lose a lot of money in their first year. So really all things considered, net, Peacock only losing $1 billion is a little surprising to me. I thought it would have been more. But Rob, then I kind of figured it out. They really haven't gone heavy into production, in particular in 2020, of original programming, which will add up the costs a lot too. And so really they've just been putting on library content right now. So they've probably been managing their expenses a little bit. But still... You know, it's something when you see that it's lost a billion dollars. Rob, what do you think about this report of them losing over $900 million in the first <laughs> year? And have you gotten into watching the Peacock streaming channel? Have you added it to your device yet at all? What do you think? Well, first, no, I have not taken the plunge on Peacock. I, I Until they're going to do a Han series where Han comes back from the Fast and Furious franchise and solves crimes on a worldwide level, I, I don't think I'm going to subscribe. I don't know. I don't get it, John. Peacock? I think, again, like HBO Max, why not, if you're teamed up with Universal, why not call it Universal Premiere or Universal Infinite? Oh, something. I agree. I agree. It's such I, a I bad mean, name. I get what Peacock's trying to do there, the Peacock Network, but I'm like, sometimes you're too clever for your own good. It's a dumb name for a streaming service. But, again, why sign up? You know, I I, I think the, the only thing a streaming service has – Sure, you could say Disney Plus has Pixar, has Star Wars, has Marvel, has the entire Disney catalog of timeless classics. You've got all of those things. So you've got the family audience wrapped up. There's always going to be somebody there. Um, with with um, Netflix, you've got worldwide reach. You've got all kinds of varied programming from around the planet. So And it's already been established. People know that. Why do I subscribe to Peacock? What reason do I have to do it? Is there is there shatteringly original programming that I have to see? It's it's I, I feel no even as a consumer that wants to be fairly up on my media consumption. I I, I is, John is there a reason? Have well, I missed something about Peacock that I need to see? It depends on what it is you're looking for. Like for example, like I said, they really haven't ramped up their original programming yet. Right. So I mean, there's that. For me, I initially signed up for Peacock for one reason. Uh oh. Battlestar Galactica. That's that's why I signed up for it. Anne had never watched Battlestar Galactica, uh, the Ronald D. Moore series. It is, for those of you who watch the show, you know it is my number one all time favorite show by quite a bit, actually. So that's why I initially signed up for it. But then once, you know, The Office made the move there and then Parks and Rec, which I I can watch Parks and Rec, an episode of Parks and Rec every day for the rest of my life. I really can. I just love the show that much. And then, of course, when Saved by the Bell. So for us as a household, there were numerous reasons. But 
If you're not a big Battlestar Galactica fan, if you're not, if you don't really care all that much, and you're not a big fan of The Office, which I know you've never even watched, Rob. We got to correct right. that one of these days, or Parks and Rec, or whatever. Then right now, no, there's not a lot of reason to sign up for it until they get their original programming game really up and running. But again, it all depends on on what you know you have an affinity yeah. for when it comes to programming. I, I mean, I think that's that's really what it is. That's what people come back back and forth to, and I, I do think the name is a real problem. You know, it's it's the first first rule of marketing. You got to have br good branding, especially in this in this day and age. And I think, like we've talked about, HBO Max's problem is how is HBO Max different than HBO Go or HBO Plus or HBO whatever you're going to call it? People don't know the difference, and I, I think it's problematic in this day and age. I'm sure Peacock will will eventually get there. But I don't know if you've got the entire Universal Studios library at your disposal and their entire rich legacy, century-old legacy. I don't know why they're leaning into these strange names and not going Warner Brothers, Universal, Paramount. These are names people recognize for from American history. Why wouldn't you sign up for those rather than Peacock? Uh, I, I mean... What, am I going to the zoo? Like, I, I get it. It is... It is the, um, what do you call it? It is the uh, mascot of the network. But really, right. is that a good enough reason? Just because it's the mascot of the network? But that's just NBC. Right, yeah. You know, it's not, you've got, you're tied to one of the great movie studios that has such an American legacy all the way back to the, the 1920s even. And, you know, everyone knows everything from like the Universal Monsters to... I mean, hell, Earthquakes, a universal <laughs> movie. The airport movies are universal films. It's like, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. Actually, All right. I don't think the airport movies are universal. They might be Paramount. I could be wrong about that, but whatever. But again, you yeah, they, they need to do something over there. And by the way, Carissa Singleton sends in a super chat badge in the live chat. Thank you, Carissa. I appreciate that. All right, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? Like, I, I think it's pretty obvious. Like, that's actually not a bad outing. A $1 billion loss compared to some of the other streamers, but they need to get their stuff up and going. Only $100 plus million in revenue. They need to correct that. What do you guys think? Jump down into the comments section below and leave us your thoughts. All right, guys. 